Hi, this is Colin Mitchell with Monster Technology. Thanks for joining our live webinar on how to control and save money with rule-based printing presented by Monster Technology and Print Audit. We're going to wait a few minutes here as we see a few more people joining and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll leave time at the end for questions and we have some exciting uh, announcements at the end of the presentation as well. All right, thanks for those that have already joined and the people just joining to our live webinar presented by Monster Technology and Print Audit, How to Control and Save Money with Rule-Based Printing. And we have our host, Paul Georgie from Print Audit, who will take it from here. Hello everyone, thank you for attending today. Uh, my name is Paul Georgi, I am uh, a representative of Print Audit here uh, associated with uh, Monster Technologies. Um, today we're going to be going through a little bit about um, understanding your print stream, talking about uh, some advantages uh, that you can uh, utilize or gain with uh, when it comes to print management. And we're not just talking about the device here, we're actually talking about the user workflow. And why is user workflow critical? It's quite simple. It's the end user that's doing the print job. It is not the device. And understanding the print choices that users are making is a key critical component of anyone's cost reduction or management strategy. And I'll take you through an example of this. So here are two printers. And on the outside, when we look at the size of them, when we look at the speeds and feeds and even the cost per page, they're identical. There's no difference. But when we see the user perspective, we notice that there's a disconnect. Why is the what pr printer on the left-hand side being used by only one person? Why are they printing off jobs that average 10 pages? Why do they have a high threshold of over 15 or over uh, 50 plus page jobs going to these devices? Because even though the cost per page is identical, the cost per print job or the cost per document is very different. As you can see here, because this one user is only using this one device, it's costing them 25 cents on average every time they click print, compared to the eight users on the right-hand side, where their document's only three pages, and this is only costing them about seven cents per print job. Now, this is just one component of it, but if you think about it, it brings up a couple questions. What is that one user printing? Why do they have their own printer? Why are they not sharing the printer with the other eight users? Or better yet, should they actually have combined and get a bigger device? Should they get a smaller device? These are some of the things that we can uncover for you. Now, Print Audit 6, the software we're talking about today, tracks 35 different pieces of information from every single print job. So we know who printed, we know where they printed, we know the document name, the time of day, the application. The way this system works, this will not only track anything that gets printed to a network or a single function printer, it will also get tracked the local uh, devices as well as multifunction printers. 
Now, the idea behind this is to get the software installed to get a benchmark of what is going on in your environment. And we do this through a very quick assessment. Uh, typically, they're between 30 and 60 days. And what we do is we track every single end user without them knowing what's going on. From there, we take a small database extraction and we walk it through what we call Insight, which is what I'm showing you on screen now. Now, Printouted Insight is a business intelligence tool that allows you to navigate through all the data that's collected by Printout at 6. In this case here, I'll show you a couple of examples of, of what we've got in this environment. So this was done over the month of February. As you can see, there's only 28 days tracked. These were 206 users. During those 28 days, they printed to 64 printers, produced 120,000 pages. These users click print 35,000 times in one month. When we look at a couple of things when it comes to color versus mono, we know that we plugged in the numbers ahead of time, agreed upon with the customer, and it was about a penny and a half black and white and six cents color. So when we look at the printing, we noticed that only 21% of their output was in color. But based on the cost of color printing, it was almost half of what they were uh, being charged for when it came to printing. Beyond that, we were also able to identify month over month what was going on in their environment, uh, how many times people are using locally connected versus uh, going through a print server or even printing directly to the device. As well, we were able to identify the top models by print volume. But beyond that, we can actually impact and take a look at the workflow. So I've just switched over tabs, and right now what we're looking at is a little bit more in depth into the metrics behind printing. So now we know we've got 206 users, and during the month of February, of course, they printed the 35,000 print jobs. The average job size was 3.36 pages, which is typical for most organizations. On average, the end user every single month will print 126 color pages, 460 mono, totaling 586 pages. Based on the cost per page that we put in, we know that this environment is costing $14.46 per employee per month to print. $7.56 of that is because of color. Now the other thing you'll notice here on the uh, right hand side is in the middle we've got this percentage of email slash web printing in color. This is a neat little uh, metric that you want to take a look at especially in your environment. If you have people who are printing and you're wondering what's going on this is a great one to look at. In this case here 21% of the output from email, so if you're using something like Outlook, or from the internet, let's say Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, any of those web browsers, we break it down. And in this case, this environment, 20% of that type of printing is being printed in color. But let's take a look at it. I'm gonna delve into this Outlook information. And as you can see here, these thresholds all change. Now I know when it comes to email printing, I've got 152 users who over the month of February printed off 3,200 emails and 30% of that email printing was in color. If I scroll down here, you'll see a couple of things that we see. Every time an end user is clicking print from an email, it's costing 97 cents per user. 63 cents of that email is because of color. And that's averaging out, obviously. Uh, as you can see here, I've got my top 10 users, and I've got my top 10 users by uh, color. So if I wanted to, I could dig into this one particular person who did print off 94 color pages from email, and I could identify what they're actually doing, what time of day, and even what they're able to, uh, to look at through and through. Now, I'm gonna scroll down here, and I'm gonna show you a couple other things to, to think about and consider. This is special if you have multiple devices uh, at different various speeds. So what we know about this environment is 83% or sorry, 83.6% uh, of the time an end user is clicking print. It is a job between one and three pages. So that tells me that my employees are printing off very, very quickly. But when I look at the pages to job size down below, you'll notice that that one to three page output is only 40%. The real key here is looking at these 50 plus page jobs. 
And what you'll see here is this is 11% of the output, but if I hover over the 50 plus page jobs, which I can barely get over here, it is less than 1% of the time. But I'm going to show you something really neat here. And, and let me, before I delve into that, let me show you something. You'll notice on the uh, left-hand side here, the duplex information, 14% of their output is being produced in duplex, which is a great number to look at. Now, let me just open up the advanced filtering here. And what I want to do is I want to concentrate on anything over 25 pages because that's a good impact area. It's over 50% of my print volume. And let me see what I can do with that. So the first thing I notice is that, I'll scroll back up here, is that there were 104 users that produced 586 print jobs. The average job size was 51 pages. Most of it is coming from PDF. So that raises another question. Why are my end users printing PDFs to paper? Wasn't I, weren't we uh, moving towards a PDF strategy to reduce that paper? The other thing you'll notice down here with the duplexing is that in those jobs over 25 pages, 13% of it was duplexed, which is great. That's fantastic. But if I look over the single-sided, there were 25,000 pages in a month that were printed single-sided. Now you do a little bit of math on that. If you were to enforce duplexing over 25 pages, and you were to make sure that anything over 25 pages was absolutely duplexed, what you would have here is you could eliminate somewhere along the lines of about 15,000 pages almost, about 12,500 pages. So 12,500 pages a month, that works out to about two, two and a half boxes of paper. Two and a half boxes of paper at $45, you can see where I'm going with the savings here. Just by coming in and targeting some of these things and optimizing some of the environment, you can see where you'd be able to easily um, easily navigate through and come up with some savings. So how do we come up with those savings? How do we change the behavior? Well, this is where rules-based printing comes in. Now, rules-based printing is a behavior modification. You'll notice from the data that I showed you, there was a couple things that I identified rather quickly. Things like email printing, or better yet, let's start with job size. And the way rules-based printing would work is, uh, let's work through the scenario here. So we've got one employee, They've got access to a single net function network printer, a USB printer, as well as a multifunction printer. We know that we want to put in a job size limit just because we don't want those end users using those USB printers to print off very large jobs. They're there as a convenience. They're there for a reason. Let's make sure they're using them properly. In this case, a one to three page job, no problem, but if it's more than 10 pages to a USB printer, we can absolutely cancel that print job and say, hey, this is costing way too much money. We're going to cancel this outright. And in fact, in here, we've even put a little variable here showing the end user how much money this is going to cost. Now, this allows you to put this messaging into any form you want. In this case here, um, they decided to break down the color and model printing of that print job. They also put in the variable cost, and they put in a little message in there saying, please move this down the hall. Eventually, what happens? two to three pop-ups, the end user realizes, oh, you know, I need to start using that MFP or I need to start using that larger workflow, work printer to be able to uh, do this or else I'm going to get that little pop-up. So what we're doing here is we're teaching the end user this is how you responsibly print. You can do this around anything. It may not necessarily be uh, a job size. Maybe you want to increase duplexing. In this case here, we've even put a little environmental message in there saying, hey, if you just increased your duplexing, we could increase, we could actually save a couple hundred trees per year. Do you really want to continue printing this, yes or no? In this case, this is a soft rule. So it does allow the end user to continue printing the job uh, the way it goes through. Maybe it is something that they needed to do, single-sided only. Maybe it's something for shareholders, who knows? This gives them the idea, hey, we're looking at this, we see this as wrong, but you can do it anyways. The other one is a great one around help desk communications. Now with help desk communications, it's a very simple formula, and we've seen this before. You've got an IT person who gets a call when a printer goes down. That printer goes down and uh, you know the end user says, hey, this is down, do you know this? IT person says, yeah, no problem, I'll call, I'll call service and we'll get this uh, fixed right away. 
But what that end user doesn't do is they don't tell anyone else around them, hey, did you know this printer's down? And what happens eventually is that another user goes to print and realizes it's down and then calls IT. This happens so frequently that Gartner Institute actually came up with a stat that for every single printer going down, you will see about three to four phone calls per printer when it goes down into an IT desktop support t function. So what you do in this scenario is very simple. As soon as the first user calls in, you put up a pop-up message. That pop-up message in this case is saying, cancel your print job. The printer is currently out of service. Please use another printer. Oh, and don't bother calling us because we already know. This does a couple of things for you. In your, it, it, first off, it eliminates those calls into IT support about the uh, printer being down. Second one is, and we've seen this scenario before, is a whole bunch of people print to a printer. Meanwhile, they know it's down. And instead of canceling their print job, they just go back to their desk, they print that print job to another device. In this case here, what we do is we put that message out there ahead of time. Because that job is canceled before it gets to the printer, you no longer have to worry about uh, those jobs being queued up at that printer and someone puts that printer back online and then all of a sudden hundreds of pages come out wasted. There's another function to the software, not just on rules-based printing. And I'd like to uh, talk about this a little bit more. This is a little bit more specialized, but um, you can even do this on, let's say you've got one user who's heavy user and abuser of the system, likes to do things like a paper process. Um, you can even put them on an allowance if you wanted to. In this case here, um, we've decided, hey, we want to build back for our projects. Uh, maybe we're a law firm, maybe we're an architecture or engineering firm, and anything that we're doing on behalf of a customer, we want to make sure it gets associated back to that customer. So the first thing we could do is we could set it up on the MFP panel, where an end user could log in and then identify by a project or a matter or even a client in matter code uh, what they were printing or what they were making a copy for. The other thing we'd be able to do is do this from the print side. Eventually, all this information gets recorded back to a database that you can actually use to export out uh, this information into accounting software. This works both on the MFP as well as the print side. Now that we've come up with a strategy and we've done some reduction, we can see the savings. But let's take a little bit further than that. And let's talk about this, because we see this quite a bit. In this case here, we're looking at paper that is left beside the device. So we've, we've taken a look at the usage, we've taken a look at uh, the audit trail of what's actually coming uh, through a printer. We also looked at uh, moving and driving volumes to more of the workhorse type devices. But unfortunately, this doesn't uh, answer what you're looking at here, which is those unclaimed print jobs at the end of the device. Maybe it's a security issue, maybe it's because someone else was looking for a print job and they picked it all up and they flung it everywhere. But this happens quite a bit. In this case, what we can do is we can eliminate these unclaimed stacks of paper. We can dramatically increase document security. And we do this by implementing our secure software. And secure works very simply. The end user is at their computer. They go to print. It gets held at a secure queue. Then they can do something like walk up to an MFP. And you can uh, type in, you know, use a, a PIN code your Active Directory credentials, or even some sort of card technology. And right on the MFP panel, you'll get a view of your personal print queue. Now, these are only jobs that you've printed. This isn't a shared queue. This is only the jobs that you have access to function to do certain functions with. In this case, you've got three options. You can select a document, hit release. You can hit the quick release all document and release all the jobs that you have queued up. Or if you wanted to, you could say, hey, I didn't want to print that Q4 plan doc. I'm going to hit cancel, and that job never gets printed. Beyond just going to an MFP, this also works around single function printers. So you think about it, these single function printers don't have a huge interface. They're very small. They're designed just to, just to uh, bring out print jobs. What we can do in those cases is we can actually create a web landing page in your office where an end user could work from their computer, print a job, have it held at that queue, and then be able to walk up to the device with something like an iPad 
or even their smartphone, log into the web page, ID who they are, and be able to release that print job with the exact same functionality as an MFP. This does also give you the, the ability to release all print jobs as well as cancel any job that you didn't want released to begin with. So all in all, this is a pretty in-depth strategy, as you can see, but being able to actually look at the information you're picking up, being able to identify who's printed, what they're printing, where they're printing to, can give you a great strategy moving forward to not only reduce any security holes, but be able to save money at the same time. The technology is simple. Print Auto's got a number of different components. The first one is what we call our information collection engine. This collects information based on what the device is telling us. This is an SNMP collection agent, and this is more of a function for Monster Technology to do things like automated meter reads or check on service and supply levels. On top of that, we have the Print Audit 6 client. This is a five megabyte client that can be deployed out by any means uh, your IT sees fit. And from there, we'll be able to start tracking the end users. On top of that, there is also another component, which is what we call the embedded, which allows the end users to log in with their IDs before they actually start using the device, as well as uh, the functionality of a release station for a follow me print solution. Once all this data is tracked, and again, this is all gets tracked to a database that hold, is hosted in your environment, that's when we come up with the analysis and we walk through uh, Insight to come up with some recommendations on how we can actually save you money. So now we're at the question component of our uh, webinar here. As you can see, we wanted to keep this a little bit under time. Uh, so far, we're at uh, the 22 minute mark. Excellent. So thanks, Paul. We're going to open it up for questions. If you have any questions, go ahead and enter those into the chat box and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. If for some reason we can't get to your question, then we'll make sure to email uh, and follow up and get that question answered for you uh, after we wrap up so that we do end on time. All right. Okay, so so looks, like I, like... looks like we have a couple questions coming in, Paul. Um, the first question that I see is, will Print Audit track Mac users? Yes, we do have a client that's based for uh, Mac printing. Um, so if you are, are in an environment uh, where you guys have a mixture of uh, Windows and uh, Mac operating systems, um, we will be able to track those users the same way. Okay, excellent. And we see, I see another um, question here about pricing. Uh, what is the cost of the product? So that's a question that I can answer. We really have two models for the product um, for Monster Technology for the PA6 software. The first model is if we manage your print devices, then this is an added component at no charge. So we include rule-based printing and all of the features that Paul discussed uh, at no additional charge if we're managing your uh, fleet. And that means you know providing service and supplies uh, into an MPS program. And this is an added component. Now, if, if that's not the case, then we do have a per seat price. Um, and it's really dependent on how many users. So it is a per user per month price uh, depending on how many users your organization has. I'm seeing another question come into the queue here. It says, uh, does this require a print server or direct, or is direct printing supported? So um, just a little bit about the architecture. Because this is client-based, um, it doesn't matter whether you're using a print server or if you are using uh, a direct, uh, direct to IP printing. So if you're in a serverless environment, um, we will be able to track the information. Now the information typically gets recorded to an SQL database. So if you have uh, an SQL server, or um, if you are maybe a smaller environment, something like SQL Express, which is a free version for Microsoft, uh, will work 
just fine. Okay, and I, I see another question coming in. Um, it says, can I track by department? Yeah, so um, there's no problem with that. We can set up a number of different reporting uh, groups uh, based on your users. Um, if you have, if you're using something like uh, Active Directory, for example, and you've got your uh, users broken out into an organizational unit, uh, let's say departments, um, we can automatically uh, track them based on that OU unit. Um, if not, uh, we can easily go through a process where we supply you a list of uh, end users and then come up with a strategy of adding those uh, departments uh, to the reporting system that you can report on either on a scheduled basis or on demand. Okay. And we have another question, Paul. Does this slow down my server? Um, absolutely not. Uh, the way the system works, it works outside of any type of print server. Um, the communication between the client and the backend database is only about 10 to 20 kilobytes. And that communication only happens when an end user hits print. So if an end user is clicking print, um, then there's a, a bi-directional traffic between the client and the um, uh, a couple of the uh, components of the software itself. And it says, hey, is there any rules that I need to pop up? Um, if not, uh, it clears it. If it does, then it pops up the rule on the desktop, and then that information gets recorded back to the database. Okay. And it looks like we have a follow-up question to that, Paul, which is, is the process difficult, and does it need many man hours by my IT to install? Oh, I've, you know, this is a very easy software to install. Um, you know, I, and I'll give you a good story about this. We had um, uh, we had a university up in Indiana that decided to pick this up for their faculty. Um, they were able to, uh, through something like Active Directory Group Policy, they were able to deploy the software um, literally over a lunchtime to about 1,500 users. Wow, that's pretty seamless. All right, looks like we've got time probably for, for one more question. Um, any new questions, any, any follow-up questions, any further clarification on any of the questions that were already asked? Now would be the time, so we can end on time. Uh, is this, uh, we have a question, is this HIPAA compliant? Yes, so the way this system works, because this tracks only the metrics of the of the document, it doesn't actually uh, store an image of the document, it doesn't uh, track any of the content of the document, um, the, this falls directly in line with HIPAA compliancy. And if you think about it, um, you know, if you're dealing with any type of medical records or if you're dealing with any type of financial records, you want an audit trail of who's printing it to paper. You want to be able to take a look at this and say, okay, who actually printed this document from my environment? Um, because we've got the ability to do not just look at that, but if you think about it, you can even create a rule around an actual document being produced. So you can do something like, hey, look for certain keywords within a uh, the title of the document and trigger a rule based on that. It falls directly in line with um, the way a uh, any type of regulatory compliance, including HIPAA, uh, works. Excellent. All right, so we've got one minute left. That's all the questions we'll have time for today. Um, if there is any questions we didn't get to, we'll make sure to email a response uh, and get those answered today for you. Uh, we do have a couple of announcements. So of all of the people that did show up today, um, we're offering a few things here. So one uh, of our attendees is going to win a $100 Amazon card, and we'll announce the winner of that via email, uh, private message today. And then in addition to that, anybody who signed up for the webinar, we're going to offer a free assessment, um, which typically is 30 to 60 days, and that includes the installation and you know analysis of uh, areas that where we can implement rules uh, to provide a cost savings. And then in, on top of that, we're also going to provide a 30-day free trial. So we'll you know help with the implementation, uh, get the software going, uh, 
roll it out and you know you won't get billed for the first 30 days and nothing will be required to be signed or anything of that nature until you know you see the value after the end of that trial. Uh, we do have a handout in the handout section. We'll have a little bit more information on that. Feel free to grab that handout there um, and you know reach out to your point of contact here at Monster Technology with any additional questions or if you'd like a personal demonstration or would like to move forward with the free assessment and take advantage of the 30-day trial. Uh, thanks again for everybody who showed up and thanks for uh, to Paul over at Print Audit for doing a great job. Thanks everyone. Have a good day.